morning guys Sean here back with another video today we have just set up a little day camp here on the farm um, decided to get back here set the hammock up for a little while we're gonna do a little bushcraft Thanksgiving dinner let's get it okay so because we're here at the house and we don't have to carry a pack around or anything like that we're going to get to play with all the different toys today Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get us a fire started, um, but because it's Florida, I'm going to go ahead and move the fire out away from my hammock, because even though it's the end of November, we don't really need a fire for heat right now, so I'm going to clear me a little spot out here and uh, get us a fire going. Then we got some building to do that's going to be pretty fun. Break those aside because we're going to still need those little twigs to get started. That should be plenty. So I've got plenty of this blowdown type of stuff on the property here. Um, just smaller stuff, but I'm gonna try to get it started with all the stuff that's still hanging up off the ground here because anything that's on the ground is probably damp. Okay, so we've got our uh, firewood put together. We need to go find us something to make a tender bundle out of. And uh, let's see what we can find. Maybe we can find something that will take a spark from the flint. That'll be fun. Okay, so real quick, I want to show you something. I've got this old dead pine tree here. Um, now, if you are looking for good tender to get a fire started with, or um, if you can, you know, if you've got a lighter or something, it'll make it real easy. This right here, all this uh, pine tar um, sap that's run off of that tree, that stuff right there, you can light that and it'll burn like crazy. So, um, very similar to, to fat lighter. Um, you can actually put some of this inside your tender bundle if you strike a spark and this will help extend your flame so it's sort of slim pickings around here for good tender bundle material but I've got this old cedar tree here and I can pull some of this bark off of this cedar tree and uh, where I can get it to come loose easily 
pull this bark off of here and then you can take your knife and take the spine of your knife and just kind of rub down the bark and make it get fluffy and furry and all this stuff right here will make a really good tender bundle Okay, so I thought it might be kind of fun if we used my um, flint and steel kit. Now I've got matches. This is my fire kit actually, but I've got matches and a lighter in here. But I've got a flint and steel in here. And uh, I thought it might be fun if we used the flint and steel and our little uh, bird's nest to see if we can get this fire started. Now I've got a, this piece of, I think this is, might be quartz, I don't know, it's what came in the kit. Could be flint, it's got a little pink to it, but I don't think so, I think it must be quartz. And uh, close this thing up so none of my stuff falls out of it. But you can also, uh, and I have done it obviously, you can use this tin to make char cloth. We find the sharp edge on this thing, see if it'll throw a spark. Oh yeah, she'll throw a spark. So let's uh, get that bird nest together and uh, see if we can't get us a fire started. Okay, so we've got this, this cedar bark kind of all bird nested up. Now I'm going to get me a piece of my char cloth out and see if I can't catch a spark to put in here and uh, get it blown in the flame. So in my kit, I keep a little plastic bag that's got already pre-made char cloth in it. So we're just going to tear us a little piece of that char cloth off of there. I want to find a good sharp edge if I can. That might work right there. Just that quick. Just like that. See that? Now we're going to put that in this tender bundle. Or no, in the bird's nest. Okay, we got it in there. Now let's see. Get that going. Okay, I'm not worried too much about it going out right now because it's still got those embers in there.
I'm just going to go real slow. Slowly let that thing build up. Give it a bunch of tiny stuff to start with. Just gotta let it grow now. Now if you think you might be interested in this little uh, uh, flint and steel kit, I'll leave a link in the description. Now our fire is rolling pretty good. We're going to use our uh, old pot hanger that I made. I'm going to set this pot kind of not directly over the fire, but kind of close to the fire. And uh, get us some coffee going while we go gather up some materials for another... Uh, thing that we're going to need to cook this Thanksgiving dinner. So here on the farm we have a ton of these old uh, or these young actually wild cherry trees. They're aggravating. They grow all over the place. They're really not good for anything. Um, they're good for bonfire wood but you can't cook with them because they um, if you cook with them it'll soot your meat up and it'll make it taste nasty. So um or i've never figured out how to cook with it anyway i i could be wrong but i can't figure out how to cook with it it's not like regular cherry wood this is just wild cherry uh black cherry and uh, i've never been able to cook with it but we have a ton of these all over the place and i've been uh systematically kind of thinning them out and uh so today we're going to use these to our advantage and we're going to use some of these to uh build something to cook with I want to say this is my place this is my wood this is my farm I do not condone going out into a national forest or somewhere like that and just cutting down live trees not good practice and it can get you in trouble some places All right, sounds like it's time for some coffee. Adventure awaits, sometimes even in your own backyard. coffee okay so now that we have our coffee made we're going to go ahead and extend this fire out some and uh, make it a little bit longer and get us a good bed of coals going you'll see why we're going to do that here in just a few minutes okay so we cut us a couple of pieces of this wild cherry and we cut them with these a uh, limb sticking out off of it. And uh, now we've got some trimming we need to do. Alright, now we get to play with the uh, 
cold steel trail boss a little bit so I'm gonna take one of these and set it off to the side for the second and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and chop some of this down to a point doesn't have to be real sharp or real fancy I mean needs to be kind of sharp but with this soft sand out here shouldn't be too big of a problem anyway Okay. Okay, so these things are a little overkill on size and it made it where I couldn't drive them in the ground, but these were the only two that I could find that had the sort of the correct angle on these limbs that I wanted. And that's gonna be kind of important for what I'm trying to do here. So uh, I just took my little shovel here and dug just a little hole for them, dropping them down in it. And uh, now we got to go find some some other logs to go along with it. So we still got a lot of work to do. Okay, so as you can see, we got us a uh, fairly over-engineered little uh, cookhouse for the turkey. But I decided to go ahead and use some of the uh, oak that I had around here because this way it can dry out and i can use it for my next couple of fires if i decide when i decide to camp out here so um i decided to go ahead and do that because the some of the uh, the uh wild cherry i won't be able to do won't be able to use for cooking so like i said but um anyway we're gonna use some of this oak for it but we're gonna lash this thing together and uh i want to lash these pieces together here and get them tightened down pretty good um just use a little jam knot here i'll probably have to get this thing turned around a little bit um get this thing lashed together so it doesn't want to come apart on me okay so i got that thing lashed together pretty good now i've got to get my fire built back up and uh Let's go get that bird ready. Okay, so we have one of our birds here. This is just a little five pound chicken that we raised here on the farm. We butchered it ourselves, plucked it, did the whole nine yards. So now we're gonna use it for um our bushcraft thanksgiving um today our thanksgiving mm -hmm. we're just cooking for me and sarah and uh tomorrow is going to be our big thanksgiving day we always have a, a huge thing here for the whole family so um we're going to be doing a, a turkey and everything tomorrow but for today we're just going to be doing this chicken i think we're going to be doing some stuffing and we're going to be doing some uh homemade cranberry sauce which should be really good and then um if everything goes right i'm gonna try to bake a couple of little pumpkin pies uh, in my dutch oven on the fire so fingers crossed we can get all that done but now we've got to truss this bird up season it and get it hanging over the fire so we can get this thing going so uh let's get into that okay now i'm gonna just be kind of guessing on this uh i think i know what i'm doing but you know, I could be wrong. So, um, I'm going to truss these feet together. And I don't know if I should be doing this. Maybe I should do one first and then wrap the other one, huh? Maybe we'll do it like that. And then pull them together. 
wrap the other one maybe wrap them together like I said guessing on this so I probably should have taken some time to really look up how to truss up a chicken but you know uh, it's just not my style so just guessing that that's going to hold I believe so now I'm going to flip this thing over and of course I grabbed the bird that doesn't have much neck bone left but I think I've got enough because you're supposed to go around this neck bone I believe like that and then we got to turn it back over go back now I'm sure there's people probably screaming right now that I'm doing this the wrong way but so now that we've got that I'm going to come across let's see how do I want to do this I think I want to come across the bird like this <laughs> yeah totally guessing here Okay, let's go this way then. Now. All right, where do we go for, from here? Um, let's go back. Let's go back through the feet. Or the legs, I mean. Tight. Go back around this neck bone. And let's tie it off. What did you say? What's the worst that could happen? Right? I dropped my chicken in the fire. That would definitely be. Worst case scenario. But I think that might work. May not be the way other people would do it, but it's the way I did it. So now I need one more piece. I sorry sorry about moving that camera around on you. I need one more piece to hang it from. So we're going to tie us a knot in our cord here so we don't drop it. I mean, so it doesn't unravel. And I want a good, a good length of it so I can have room for it to dangle. So, tie another knot in it. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come and bring them, make a loop. I'm going to come through these legs with it. Like that. 
I'm gonna bring both of these up through there and that should give me plenty of room to hang this chicken so now I'm not one to just hang this bird over the fire like that um, I want to wipe this bird down with some butter and if you don't like seeing people touch chickens like this you might want to turn away for a few minutes but so I'm gonna just grab a little bit of this butter and I'm kind of want to smear this butter kind of all over this chicken and then uh, I'm gonna season it up good and then throughout the uh, throughout the cooking we're gonna go back through and actually baste this chicken in butter and uh, its own drippings and, and you'll see that here in a minute so let me get this thing buttered up good now I'm no chef this is just kind of the way I'm doing it so do not follow my instructions on cooking this bird this is like I said this is just how I'm doing it okay so for the seasoning I'm gonna go with a barbecue seasoning on here the brown sugar bourbon and uh, I know that's not a traditional um, traditional Thanksgiving like chicken turkey bird whatever but I like them sort of smoked with some barbecue seasoning on them and uh, so we're gonna smear this seasoning down around there real good on this bird we got some more seasoning right here we'll use and I want it heavily seasoned I'm gonna put some butter and seasoning inside the cavity too Try to get some of this that looks pretty heavily seasoned I would say now probably should have buttered that inside before I uh, trust it up but you know that's not the way I do things okay, now with COVID and everything you're supposed to wash your hands a lot so I went ahead and go went and cleaned my hands up again before I um, get the butter smeared down in here uh, I don't want to be you know contaminating the butter with seasoning um, the butter pan and you know you're not supposed to uh, or I mean you're supposed to be washing your hands more now that we under this COVID and all that stuff now anyway and so you know that's the second time I've washed my hands this week and it's only Wednesday so I feel like I'm doing my part um, with that so and you guys do your part too now um but i got a little lump of butter down in there and i'm gonna stand this thing up like this i'm gonna put some seasoning down inside the bird and i just kind of want to roll that around a little bit and get that down in there okay let's go get this bird on the fire all right so we're gonna get this bird hung down I think I'm gonna go somewhere around uh, maybe around that high and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put a toggle in this line all right so I'm gonna drop this down kind of where I want it
I'm gonna put my other log here. Let that bad boy sit right there. Now, I'm gonna put these other limbs up here and these are just gonna be kinda to help hold the heat in. And now we're gonna scoot those coals over to it so it can get some more uh, heat and add some wood to it. Okay, so the goal here is to cook this bird real slow. Um, I've got a lot of fire right now, but the fire is on the outside and I'm looking to get a lot of heat inside uh, this container right here. And it's, it's very hot inside these walls right here. I don't want to catch my uh, firewall on fire, but I do want it to get hot enough uh, inside there that it's going to cook the bird. And uh, I guess you could kind of say this is a mix between roasting and baking and smoking. Um, I don't know what you would call it, to be honest with you. But uh, I think it's going to be good. Now, I can already tell I'm going to have to be real careful and keep a good eye on this thing because Mick is circling this thing like a wolf. Uh, he wants a bite of that chicken bad. Now, right now, it's hot enough right there that he's not going to get in there to it, but he wants it bad. Looks pretty cool. I think it's going to be good. It was a lot of work getting that thing built, but I think it's going to be worth it. Well, now all I've got to do for a while is just kind of sit here. I can lay in the hammock and relax for a little while. And um, every now and then get up, spin the bird, and uh, put some wood on the fire. Um, here in a little while, I'll have to start getting the other stuff together. But for right now, I can finally relax. So I'm letting this thing cook. Letting this thing cook real slow. And uh, just every now and then putting a little bit of butter on it and basting it with that butter now here in a little while when it starts getting closer to done i'll pick it up and kind of tilt it and that way it can spin and get a little more evenly cooked on this end but uh right now it's doing pretty good cooking real slow but that's what i want and uh just before we're ready to be done with it, I'll sprinkle it with some flour, and that should crisp the skin up and everything. So, it's looking good though. question and continued working on the zip tie. He had to go by feel, unable to see how far into the plastic the pipe had cut. Dax pushed harder until he could feel the ties cutting into the soft flesh at his wrists. Well, it was cooking a little slower than I wanted it to. So I went ahead and got some palm fronds and wrapped the, that side and put palm fronds on the top to try to hold some of the heat in. Uh, seems to be helping a little bit now. Uh, still got to let it cook a good bit longer, but here in a little while we're going to tip it up and uh, try to let the bottom of it cook some too.
definitely, definitely getting hot in there now. So the bird's taking a little longer than I thought it was going to. In an effort to remain truthful, I may or may not have dozed off in the hammock and let my fire get too low and wasted a little time with the bird not cooking. It could happen to anybody. Um, so I got the fire cranking back up on it, trying to get this chicken done. But now we need to work on some of the side dishes. One of the things that I really wanted to do was make some homemade cranberry sauce. So we're going to do that right now. Let's get to it. Okay, so what we're going to need for this is I'm going to use roughly a cup of apple juice. I'm going to need this whole bag of cranberries. And that is about eight ounces of cranberries. We're going to put these in there. Then I'm going to need about three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. And how much was it? It was a quarter teaspoon of ground allspice. So I've got all that mixed in this bag from inside the house. So we're going to put all that in there. Now I'm going to get this mixed up real good. And we're going to go get this on the fire and let it boil for a little while. Okay, so I've got my trivet sitting there. I'm going to reach over here, grab some of these coals. I'm going to try to get some of this, a couple of these burning sticks. under here and I'll just get us a little fire going under here it is definitely on the warm side We have our cranberries boiling so now I can take some of the fire off of them and let them slow down and uh, let them get back to kind of a simmer and our bird is finally getting cooked up pretty good over there so we're doing good. Well, in all reality, this has taken a good bit longer than I thought it would take. Um, I know I did kind of let my fire go out earlier and, and stuff like that, but it really did. It has taken a good bit longer. I should have made sides on this to hold the heat in a little bit better, but, you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. But uh, I've still got to cook my little pumpkin pies. My cranberry sauce turned out really good. And uh, unfortunately, I forgot to get uh, chicken broth to make my stuffing with so unfortunately we're not going to have any stuffing but that's that's fine we'll have plenty of that tomorrow but this was uh you know just going to be supposed to be a day camp and it's turned into an all day camp so um anyway that's just how it goes sometimes 
but it's going to be good when we get it done, I know. Okay, so we just had a minor catastrophe. Uh, trying to speed this thing up, I let my flames get too high and they burn my dang string and drop my bird, luckily, in my in the basting pan so it wasn't the end of the world but uh i'm gonna not worry about all that right now i gotta get these little pumpkin pies cooking so let's do that well unfortunately guys that's what happens when you get in a big hurry uh i shouldn't have been in a hurry shouldn't have been that big a deal but I'm ru I ran out of light. It was taking longer than I thought it should. You know how it goes. But, so we're going to clear this thing out a little bit. We're going to take our Dutch oven with our little pies in it. Now I've got plenty of, plenty of coals over here now. And, uh, so I'm going to Take a few of these coals out of here, set them on top, and just kind of sprinkle them around. I'm going to put some, kind of bank some around the sides here. gonna let that pumpkin pie cook for a little while and uh, we'll come back in a little while and check it well it was all going too good should have known it was fixing to all go off the rails but we're gonna let this uh, pie cook and then we're gonna go up there and check on this turkey see how bad it was messed up chicken I mean chicken Well, this thing definitely ain't going to win any beauty contests, but it is what it is. I've cooked worse, and I've definitely cooked better, but as long as it's done and tastes good, that's all that matters. So, uh, let's get this pumpkin pie in here and the cranberry sauce and cut this chicken up and see how it looks. All right, we came on inside. We got the, tur or the chicken. I'm sorry. And our little uh, pumpkin pies that we made. And I'll show you the cranberry sauce here. And here's our cranberry sauce that we made. And let's cut this chicken and see what it tastes like. Alright, let's try to carve into this thing a little bit and see what it looks like. Got my, my pop's old uh, turkey carving set. I think that's kind of kind of fitting for this so I'm just slice into it a little bit here and see what it looks like uh, it looks good now this ain't the the best I've ever cooked one obviously but this is the first time I've ever tried to do one this way so um yeah I think it looks good it still looks moist so I'm going to slice a little of it up and uh, put it on the plate and see what it tastes like. Well guys, it doesn't always go as planned. Um, I had a really good time out there today. It took a lot longer than I thought it was going to, so I ended up losing light. And uh, it gets dark so early now, it's just so hard to, to not lose light. But... I'm happy with what we got. Now, like I said, I forgot to get the the chicken broth, so I couldn't make my um, uh, stuffing. I couldn't make the stuffing. But uh, that's okay. I'll get plenty of that tomorrow anyway. But this is what we got. I got my chicken, 
I got my cranberry sauce and I got a little pumpkin pie here. So let's taste this chicken with some cranberry sauce. Well, first, taste the cranberry sauce. Cranberry sauce is really good. Um, something that I didn't do, and it didn't say to do that in the recipe, but I should have strained uh, the cranberry sauce because it does have the, the seeds in it, I guess. That's the first time I've ever done it before. I thought I'd give it a shot. Um, and I just happened to go buy a recipe that didn't say to strain it, so I should have done that. But still tastes really good. The chicken, I want a piece of that skin too. The chicken looks real moist. Man, that is some good chicken. So let's try it with a little of the cranberry sauce. Mm-hmm. Very good. Wow. So, it's really moist. It has a little bit of the smoky flavor, but not, not a ton of smoky flavor. Um, the skin is really, really good. So, let's try our little miniature pumpkin pie here now I don't know how easy it's going to be to get this little crust out of there so there we go that's really good and there's no uh no burnt on the bottom very, very good. Mm hmm Listen, guys. Uh, I want to thank you for watching this video. I had a really good time putting this thing together today. Um, I had a good time building the little um, uh, bushcraft oven or whatever you want to call it. Um... I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you've never hit the subscribe button before, hit the subscribe button for me. Give me a big thumbs up. Um, but I hope you guys have a happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I'll see you next time.